Hello everyone and I'm glad to have you back. In our last lesson we looked at while loops. In this lesson let's go ahead and look at a very interesting and powerful data structure in Python called lists. Now instead of creating a single variable to store all our objects, Python lists can allow you to store multiple items within just one single variable. Now uh, these are part of the four built-in types of in Python called collections. We have also tuples, sets, and dictionaries. So uh, let's go ahead and see how we can create a list. So here I'll just create a new, I'll call that uh, 08 on this call lists dot py like so, so we can have something uh, neat to start with. And what I'm quickly going to do is to show you how you can create a list. So use square brackets to create a list. So let's just say uh, creating a list and feel free to use any value you want. So I'm going to create a list called home. I'm going to say equals square brackets and that's it. We have an empty list. I can just simply do something like check the uh, print out the type of this object called home and if we save that and run it it tells us this is a class list like so so we can actually tell this is actually an empty python list so i'll just comment this out so but i don't want to create this let me pop you can create a list and then populate items in the list so first since we're talking about home let's set mom Let's put the number two and let's say dad and we use comma to separate uh, list elements. Let's create a float 6.0. Let's create another string called baby. Another one, let's create a number three and let's put in grandma. I think that should be enough for our uh, basic uh, list. And let's just increase that font so we can uh, see what we're working with real smoothly. So now that we have to seen how we can create a list, how can we uh, work with the list methods? Well, say for instance, we want to get the index of the item in the list. Lists uh, start from zero indexing. Basically, the first item is going to have an index of zero. The second item is going to get uh, have an index of two. And there is a handy list method that is a built-in method for the lists called the index so what we're going to do is to print out i'm just going to say home dot index and what i'm going to do is to pass in the index of one of the objects so let's say i want to get the index of mom like so so i'm going to get it to uh print out the index of grandma so uh yeah let's use mom why not so I'll do control F5 and it's telling us mom is in position zero. Let's try to print out the index of baby and save that and run it. So we can actually see the index of baby is in position four because this is zero, one, two, three, and four. So that's what the index does. Uh, tells us, uh, let's say gets the position index position of objects in a list. So that's what our index does. We can also get the third index or third item in this using square brackets. And uh, basically we can do this and put the number two. This is going to get the third element in that list. And let's see that example right here. So I'm simply going to say a print and here we use our other format items. Let's see the third item in the list is, and we'll just set this and we'll use our format specifier and we'll just pass in a raw, raw value here and then we'll pass in the variable. So let's do home. And then we pass in the third item, which is going to have an index two. Remember, we'll start, we'll start, we'll start counting the index from zero. So we have zero, one, two. Basically, this is index zero, one, and this is two. So this is going to be the third one. Zero indexed, third element. That's why I'm using two here. 
So if I save this and go to run, so long as how the, uh, it says the third item in the list is dad. Let me clear this so we can have a uh, nice view to work with. We can also use the count method. Now these are all methods. The, this is a, an example of a method of the list class. Let's see an example of the count. We can use count to count the number of times, let's say something occurs within you know, our string. For instance, if we want to count the number of times, let's add some values here to our string. Let's say uh, three, another three, and you get the idea, we just keep going. So if you want to count the number of threes we have here, we can use the count method. To do that, we can actually simply run the count method without using any print. If I say home, like so, dot count, and within the count method, I need to pass in what I want to count. So I want to count the number of time three, the number three occurs within the home list. This is how I'm going to do it now to uh, to print to say we can actually print that as well. So I could just go and say print like so, just so I can get a nice uh, result. And don't forget the close uh, closing parentheses. And I'll use an F string this time around. So I'll just cover everything within my F string. And I'll just say uh, the number of times three or cause in the list is and right here I'll just use the curly brace to cover this like so so this is going to just grab the results of home.count and then you know concatenate it with this object right here so let's save that and run it so I think we have our results but it's like kind of down here Hmm, interesting, we're not getting any output. I think I must have uh, quickly clicked that twice. Okay, good. So it said the number of times three occurs in the list is 13. So this actually occurs 13 times. I actually thought it was lesser, but there are 13. I can go ahead and count them, but the list.count has already done that for me. So now we've seen how we can work with a list that we've already created. Let's see how we can work with a list that's empty and then we populate that list using more of the list methods. If you're using Visual Studio Code and you want to find out what methods exist, you can type in the name of the list and once you press dot, this is going to show you all the methods. So all these methods actually exist for the list class. We can actually see sort, reverse, index, pop, remove, and extend. And if you actually hover your point, put your pointer over it and click this arrow, it's going to give you more information about that uh, method. So that's one way we can find out more methods. Another way to do that, you can just use help and then say list. This will actually print out the uh, help on the list class. I can do a print help on list. This will list out all the documentation you have for a class. So that's another way we're going to do it. But I'm not going to print this, so I'll just comment this out real quick. And let's create an empty list. I'll just get rid of this. Create an empty list and then populate that list. So let's call it our list. It's going to be equal to an empty list. So this is an empty list like so. So to add elements to this list, we're going to use append. So you start with the name of the list, which is our list dot append like so. And then within the append method, we can pass in what we want. So let's call this, let's uh, our games. Oops. So let's call this our games dot append. And for this, what I'm going to do is to append a single object to this. So let's just call that a uh, PS5, like so. And let's append another uh, element as well. So I'm just going to say our games dot append. And we're going to say an Xbox One S, like so. We're actually going to append another one. Let's say our games dot append. And here I'll just say uh, 
Nintendo Switch, like so. So we have an empty list, and now we've appended objects to this list. So again, if we wanted to check out the first element of our list, we could just say, uh, sorry, our games. So I'm going to say our games element zero. We say uh, our games zero. We could actually uh, print like so, just to see our results. And we could even print our games now. So let's say uh, our games, just to see that output. And let's just print everything. So first, our first print is that we can actually see a, it returns a list. And then we can actually see the uh, index of that object at the first object, which is zero. So that's why we actually have this, uh, just drag this up real quick and then drag our results like so. Yeah, so uh, that's why we can actually see that uh, result right there. So what if we want to change elements in a list? Now, when you create a list, lists are actually mutable. It means you can actually change the elements. So they're not static, they're not fixed. I can actually change the first element here or change the element here. So let's change the first element here in our empty list and let's set that to a uh, ps5 so to do that we're going to uh, let's just get rid of this so here where we have our games which is the first element here we'll use an equal sign to assign a value and we just say ps4 so if we save that oops well, that's better so we save this and then print Let's see our games right now. Let's see what happens to this list. So let's go to run and run without debugging. And let's just push this wheel up. We can actually see now the list has changed and the first element of that list is a PS4. So if we wanted to change the, uh, so this is index zero, one, two. If we wanted to change the Nintendo Switch, you guessed right. We're going to say our games and set this to two and let's just call that a uh i don't remember the consoles <laughs> oh let's call that a snes like so so we're changing the third element of our list to snes so again if we save that and run so we can actually see the third element in our list has been changed to a snes which is uh, kind of cool. So another thing we can actually do with lists is to sort the elements in a list by alphabetically or numerically. So let's say I have uh, names here and I'll just use an example of four names. So let's say the first name is uh, Ace Combat. So our second value, let's say we have uh, Resident Evil 4. And let's create the third element. Let's say we have uh, Super Mario Galaxy. We can actually sort this using the sort method. So if we say names dot sort, and we save that. Now, if we actually go to print names and save this and we run it so we can actually see it starts with a r s so it's actually sorting this alphabetically let me see if my example this is a very bad example <laughs> so i'll uh, let me just cut this and put the ace combat at the end like so and let's just call this uh let's just call this book is there any game that starts with b i don't remember right now so i'll just i'll just i'll just use book that's okay so if we save this and run it 
So now we have Ace Combat, we have Book, we have Resident Evil, and we have Super Mario Galaxy. Let's see what happens when we use uh, sort numeric uh, values. So numbers, so I'm gonna create a list of numbers and I'll just do 12.33, 0 0.12, 34.33, 0 0.00001 and 9. Let's see what happens when we sort this. So let's do numbers dot sort like so and let's print numbers. So if we save this and go ahead and run it again. So here we can actually see it has changed this to um, 1 times 10 raised to the power minus 5. So that's why it's actually, uh, that's why this is a 0 point. I actually said this value here, this is the most smallest, right? So this is the least, that's why it's actually the first and it's actually changed that to uh, the power of 10. In a negative power of 10 that's 0 0.0005 that's a standard form and then next least number is 0 0.12 then we have 8 12 and 34.33 so it's actually sorting these numbers in this order it's sending uh, sorting numbers in ascending order what if we want to sort the numbers in descending order so we can pass in an optional argument within the sort method that will actually take that uh you know kind of like uh, reverse this so here we can actually see when i actually cl clicked in between these sorts it actually popped up a hint and showed us the keyword reversed so to simply use that we're going to say reversed equals true so if we save this and we run our program Okay, the result is down there. Okay, it's not one I let's clear this. And let's run our program again. So now that I have sorting as true, we can actually see it's sorting in reversed. So it's sorting in descending order, basically the highest to the lowest. So that pretty much wraps up the uh, quick tutorial on sorting now another problem you can actually see is that let's quickly look at that problem we're using the sort method right now and what happens when i want to uh, print out the sort right so let's say for instance we have this list right here let's go ahead and print out these values so if i try to print out print numbers dot sort if I do this and we run this, we're actually going to get a very peculiar error called none. It's actually not an error. It depends on what data type you're working with. So let's see what happens to, uh, let's store this as a value, let's say a check. We're trying to check what numbers.sort is. So let's say, uh, let's also check, uh, let's say SOR, right? Let's say numbers.sort. So let's print the type of SOR. And let's also print the type of check, like so. Actually, we don't even need to print the type. Let's just see uh, numbers, check numbers, the sort. So we're trying to print the type of, uh, and we don't need these two examples. We can just use one. I think that that should be okay. So we are storing this check as numbers.sort. Let's see what type check is. So let's go ahead and save this and run without debugging. So this is actually telling us that it's of a class non-type. So basically what's happening is when we use the sort method, 
what it's doing is it's a sort method cannot be used on an iterable. So we're trying to store this and we're trying to return it as an iterable. An iterable is in iterable is an object where you can enumerate, it means you can count. So the sort method doesn't really know how to store iterables. So you're actually going to get these kind of uh, Meth uh, issues. So basically, sort is a method of the list class and can only we can only use the sort with lists and it's not an iterable that's passed. So we actually try to pass the sort into a uh, value, a variable, and it's actually telling us check is actually none. So there's a shorthand of uh, kind of like seeing what type it is. Python, uh, sorry, Visual Studio Code will give you a hint to show you that. So, and again, as we've seen, our sort will ret return none and modifies the value in its place. So, which is actually what happened here. So, if we wanted to use this in this way, Python has a built-in method called sorted. We can actually use sorted in this way. So, let's say we have numbers. Uh, let's create a new variable. Let's say sorted numbers is going to be equal to sorted and we can pass in the list numbers like so and then we can actually say print sorted numbers so if we do this and let's save it and let's run so we can actually see we're seeing this result for the sorted numbers Right, it's sorting in ascending order, basically from smallest to the largest. So that's the key difference. Sort is going to return what Python calls a non type, and a non type is a very important Python class. It allows us to return values where you would actually expect to uh, kind of like have errors because it doesn't understand what kind of uh, type you're using. So uh, Basically, that's a very short and quick definition for, you know, none. When you describe or define a function, you want to pass the first argument to that function as none. So in case you, you know, have missing values on the result, and you can actually use none to specify. Also, when you have a data type that Python is not really kind of sure of, for instance, like what we did with this right here, we have a print method that's accepting a sort that we have in that uh, example, where we actually try to print the value of the sort. Let's say, for instance, I actually do something like this. So I'm trying to print out sort.names. And maybe, for instance, I try to store that in a variable. Let's just call that A. I'm trying to print out sort.names. This is going to be a non-value type because we have a print function that is trying to print out a sort method. So we're going to have that uh, issue. And basically, the key value for a default sort is actually none, as we can actually see here, which is applicable to most methods. So I hope you understand how you can create lists, how you can access the index from a list, how you can change or mutate lists, how you can remove elements from a list. I think we haven't used that uh, function yet to remove elements. We can actually use uh, pop. So let's say, for instance, we have this uh, numbers right here. If we wanted to remove the first element, all we need to do is say uh, numbers dot pop. This is going to pop out an element and we can specify an index. So let's say we want to pop out the second element. I'll just do one like so. So if we save that, Let's put an eye out for 0 0.12, whether we're going to see 0 0.12. So let's save and run. So we can actually see 0 0.12 is now missing. It was initially here, but now it's actually missing because we've popped out 0 0.12. Basically, that means we've removed 0.12 from that list. So like I said, there are a lot of list methods. You can play around with these methods and see them. So let's briefly look at the list methods and then we could just wrap this up. So if we quickly want to know the methods, if we do uh, numbers dot, we should actually see this value. 
So we've seen append, which is going to add an element at the end of a list. We can actually use clear, and clear is going to remove all elements from the list, and it's going to make it an empty list. We can use the uh, insert to add an element at a specified position in that list. We can use extend to add elements of a list to the end of this list as well. So if we have a, another list, we can use extend to add that to that list. We've seen an example of the uh, index and we actually use the index to return the index of the first element with a specified value. And we've actually seen, uh, okay, we haven't used copy, but you can use copy to return a copy of that list. And we can use count to return the number of elements within a specified value. So these are the uh, list methods. And hopefully uh, lists are not going to be something com confusing. They're actually nice and good. In our next lesson, we're going to learn about looping, where we can use loops to count elements within a list. Thank you very much, guys, for watching, and I'll see you in the next lesson.